Regrets. I've had a few. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm switch plate is one of those flip flames. All right. Boy, oh boy, I'm so sorry that I've not been here for you guys. Those of you that actually enjoy mask talk and mask content and whatnot. Um, yeah, I've been sick. I mean, I got sick for like three days. I didn't think I was sick. I thought I burned my <laughs> throat with this wicked nasal spray, but I think it turned into an infection, you know. But anyway... It hurt, like painful, 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 painful. Um, finally, I can talk and eat and drink without being in. So anyway, at least the pain's gone enough where I could talk. And I've just, I've been pretty damn busy. And uh, it's a very busy time for business, like the diamond business, jewelry business. It's spring, is going into summer. Love is in the air. People want to get engaged and get married and make wedding bands and propose to one another. So um, this is the like this is the busy time. Next to the holidays, this is this is it. You know. So I've been very busy with that. Um, that being said, I've kind of been kicking around the idea. Obviously, the channel really is heavy in in the Halloween mask area and car stuff. But since it's Rudy's world, technically, not just the Crimson Ghost mask room, I've been thinking about doing a video showing you exactly how I make a custom piece of jewelry. Not right now. But uh, for those of you that may find that somewhat interesting, um, like how it's all done, you know? And uh, a lot of you... Some of you know what I do for a living. A lot of you probably don't. Or if you're just stumbling upon the channel, you have no idea who the hell I'm, I even am. <laughs> but, uh, God, I worked retail jewelry for many years since I was 15. Actually, in grade school, I was working for a major um, South suburb, South Chicago suburbs jewelry family because my mother was a numismatist, which is an expert in rare coins. And... Uh, she was also working at selling diamonds for this family back then. And I, after fourth grade, fifth grade, I would get dropped off at the store and I'd be vacuuming and cleaning the toilets. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's, that's how long I've been around this business, like my whole life, pretty much. Um, so to make a long story short, forever, I started selling it. 14, 15, I started learning diamonds. Um, started at the age of 18, roughly, I started to learn what it takes to custom make jewelry. So I have been doing this a long time. I'm 22 now. No, I'm 50. I'm 51 going on 52. Um, and I just thought it would be cool to show you guys how it's done. Um, because technology has definitely changed and made things a lot cooler than they used to be when it comes to making custom jewelry. Computers are used, CAD programs are used, and it's really awesome. So I thought I'll tell you guys the main differences with going with someone like myself. I'm a private, I, I technically call myself a private jeweler. Like I fly under the radar. I do not advertise for safety reasons. It's, it's a, I can tell you some horrible stories. But, uh, all of my business is through referrals as far as the diamonds and the custom jewelry. And it's, I mean, I get a lot of clients. I have a very extensive diamond inventory. I've been doing this forever. Like I said, I've been on my own for almost 25 years now as a private jeweler broke off from the store 25 years ago. And, uh, I think it'd be cool to show you guys 
what the heck's involved with that because the big difference is if I make something for someone, every diamond is hand-picked, hand-matched, millimeter gauges out, depth, diameter, color matched, clarity matched, you know, really nice goods, no chips, no, no bullshit stones. Most of the rings you'll see in retail mall jewelers or even the big box stores, that stuff is all mass produced overseas by the boatloads. And they're flying through that stuff, making them quick, making them as cheap as they possibly can so they can go out and just stick it up all your rear ends and make crazy profit. It's sickening, sickening. Um, you know, some of these engagement rings I'm doing for a third of what these major retailers would sell them for. And the quality is leaps and bounds <laughs> ahead of their crap. For instance, take one of the biggest ones in America, you know, and they say he went to the letter J, he went to there. Yeah, he went there and a customer recently told me to, that about two years ago, a client's like, hey, can you check out this uh, ring on their site? I wanna make something real similar to it, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I can make anything. So I go on their website and you're talking like one of the top chains in America, okay? And I click on details, which is the tiny, small, the fine print, okay? The fine print, oops, the, the fine print below, where it's not the center diamond, I'm talking about the, the little diamonds in the rings. So like if I was gonna make an engagement ring, there's all these little stones that accompany the center, you know, whether it's baguettes, rounds, little princess cuts, channel set, you know, bead set, whatever, they're all in the ring. So I start reading the details because I wanna know the exact carat weight of what this ring has, how many diamonds, how big they are, so I can give the customer a real close estimate on what I can build something similar for. And this is when I saw that this, um, you know, this supposedly amazing retailer, the clarity grade they were using on their rings was the bottom of the barrel. So horrible that it's to, to not stretch this into a jewelry talk and not a mask video. The clarity they were using is called I2, like the letter I2, which is about one step away from being in a drill bit. Okay, and uh, I got the video to prove it. This is one of the rings out of many. I looked at many rings on their site and I could not believe that they are putting this shit in their rings. They go overseas, buy mountains of this crap. To the naked eye, you're gonna see flaws all day long. They're gonna look hazy, cloudy, but everything under those halogen lights at the mall looks incredible. You're like, oh, it looks great. You know, they'll go, isn't it beautiful? And they're putting on his light and you're like yeah it looks great and you don't know what the hell you're looking at you know unless unless you know how to grade diamonds and know what you're looking at it's sickening what they're doing to the public and the price is through the roof because they're full retail um most of the rings on their site when i was looking at their engagement rings it was si2 which is acceptable I'm, I'm putting VS goods in there, VS1, VS2, which is way up to scale, very slanted perfections. Some of theirs was SI2, a lot were I2. One more step away from that, you're looking at drill bits and saw blade material, okay? Horrible, horrible, horrible clarity grades. So uh, it's one of the big differences. If I make something versus a big box store, I mean, it's a lot of, there's so much shit out there. It's sickening and it's, it's terrible what they do to people. Um, the profit they're making is disgusting. You know, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I was screwing the pub, the general public that hard. I mean, I'd probably be making <laughs> millions of dollars and smiling every day. Like, well, I'm really loaded now, but I can't do it. I can't do that. And it's all it's sad it's all shit anyway maybe we'll do a video just on that subject because i like to teach my clients what about what they're buying you come in and sit down in front of me most people at a retail store they're gonna go look at this one hey look at this one here oh look at that and they'll talk it up they'll 
say, oh, it's certified, or they'll say, oh, our main office certifies it. That's all bullshit. Do not buy into that. I just, all right, we're getting way off course here. <laughs> um, I, I think I would like to educate you guys on what, if you're out there and you're going to get engaged soon, I would like to give you a little bit of knowledge that will go a long way, okay? Because I hate seeing people get shafted by these companies, all right? So enough talk about the engagement ring business. Um, I, I like, you guys follow me, I would love to help you. I'm not doing this so y'all come and buy from me. Some of you live in Canada and all other parts of the, the world. I'm just saying, if I can pass some knowledge on to you and wake you up a little bit about what the hell's going on out there in this jewelry business, I'll do it. Um, now, back to the mask world. And, uh, you know, I've been, it's been quiet. I've been quiet. Hey! Get out of there! Um, not like, this hobby can be, let's just say, very annoying. Annoying to the point where I will go about my day and not even think about it because of a small handful of people in it, you know, which are just, they're just haters, you know, and, uh, it's not like I, it's not like it bothers me. It just makes me shake my head and go do something in one of my other hobbies. And it's like, man, these people are still, still talking shit, still at it. Still in this little sewing circle amongst each other, you know, talking shit about me. And I'm like, it's, it's so weird how people barely know anything about your life. And uh, they make all these assumptions. And it's like, you should go look in the mirror and evaluate your life. And say, what am I doing? Why, how can I make more money? You know, I've got, I do pretty damn well. But I got friends that run circles around me, okay? And I go hang out with one of them, and I'm like, how do I become more successful at what I do? How, what am I doing wrong, or what can I do better to make my life, you know, to make my business better, to learn more on, on how to grow and, and have my business grow? I don't sit there hating on people that have, have more money than me or are super rich, you know? Like I've got, I've got friends that are fucking billionaires and I'll sit there going, Ugh, they must have won the lottery. No, I know the businesses they've had. I know the, the stuff they've went through over the years. I know they've worked their asses off for decades and decades and decades and earned their money. And it's like, man, there's, there's, there's people out there that are so sad. It's, it's crazy. Like, you know, instead of, instead of hating someone because they have more masks than you go go sit down and go what the hell what have i been doing for the past 20 years how come how come i'm not making more money or what you know what can i do to improve my life you know i mean i got three solid haters in this in this hobby and but you know over the years it's like you, you learn to laugh it off but you're like what what did, what have i done to these people you know one of them one of them is, is so misunderstood, like back in the HMA days, he went on talking shit about me, thinking I was someone on eBay doing something else and it wasn't me, and like has hated me ever since because I called him out like, why are you saying that? I'm not doing that. I'm not making everyone I know in the hobby pay more for auctions by jacking up bids on people buying masks on eBay. Like, why would I do that? It's got to be you. Oh, I'm like, well, it's not. And ever since that, fucking dude hated me. I'm like, you're the one started this. I didn't start this. So bizarre. Another one out there, I totally understand because, you know, he needs to take happy pills and his brain is off course. Like, it's, it's not working too well. So, you know, and it just causes problems upstairs. I get that. So it's like, okay, you get a pass just because that's how you are. You know, I didn't do nothing to that person. Um, you, you notice someone talking shit to people over and over and over and you block them. Like, I don't want to see this negativity. And all of a sudden you're the target. That son of a bitch blocked me. Ah, they go crazy. Yeah. Again, I didn't do anything to that person. 
<laughs> I just didn't want to see the way they were talking to people. Ah, uh, but there's another one now. <laughs> another one though. It's like you call you call a person out so many times for screwing everyone in the hobby, then they get mad at you. I'm like I'm just showing everyone what you're doing, you know. But anyway, there's a new there's this uh, I was on the phone the other day with a friend of mine. He goes, he goes, you have a new, uh, there's a new nickname for you. <laughs> I'm like, here we go. I go, what is it this time? And he goes, now you're being called the trust fund baby. <laughs> I'm like, okay, trust fund baby. And uh, I'm like, these people know nothing about my life. They don't nothing about, they know the business I'm in or one of the businesses I'm in. <clears throat> but I've never been a part of a trust. Like, my parents were like, you need to go, you know, I was 17. You better go get your ass a job. You got to go pay for your own car insurance. You want a beeper? Go to work and get a beeper. But we're not paying for that shit. My parents, no, 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 no. You have no idea what it was like growing up in our house. <clears throat> my stepdad told my brother, you get a tattoo, I'm going to take an SOS pad and rub it right off of your body. You get an earring, I'm going to rip it right out of your earlobe. And I'm like, you better not do that because he'll do it, <laughs> you know? So, like, we learned, you know, it was not some cushy, you know, growing up with a silver spoon in our mouths bullshit. It's so crazy how people, they, they jump to these conclusions because someone's got more masks than them or I got nice masks and some nice cars. Like, there's guys out there with houses full of masks, you know? Way more than this. Yeah, I concentrate on rare shit. And shit I love and things that amaze me. But I don't want to turn into that. I don't want every room in my... And I started getting that way. I'm like, every room in my house is going to be Halloween masks falling over each other. I don't want to do that. Hanging out with Frank, becoming friends with Frank. I started to see me turning into Frank. I got to get every vintage model, every, you know, monster magazine. I need to collect every mask. Of all different companies, I need to get, I need all the monster trading cards, and, and you're getting all this stuff, and it's like, the older you get, you're like, what am I doing? You know, it gets out of control, and then there's a point in your life where you're going to stop and take a step back and go, either I got too much stuff, or you're going to say, I got to keep going. <laughs> you know, there's other things in life that I am... uh hoping to achieve and move forward with and you know I, I I'm not gonna get there by packing my house to the gills with monster shit as cool as that would be you know um, but yeah going back to the term um, trust fund baby I'm not 18 okay I'm 51 years old like I'm technically a grown man not up here I'm not but Technically, I'm a man, and uh, I've been in the, I've been in business for a long time. So, at a young age, I learned antiques, diamonds, fine watches. My whole life, I've been in the classic car thing through my father. I took that and used it to my advantage. A friend of mine had a huge classic car dealership in LA for many years. We were buying and selling muscle cars together. Like I got my hands into lots of different things along the way. And uh, you want to dig, dig in to different things and not just have one job where you're sitting in a cubicle for the rest of your life. No, there's a lot out there for the taking. And if you have any knowledge or a little bit of knowledge and can learn even more about things, get your ass in gear and do it, okay? I used my classic car knowledge to my advantage and started making a lot of money at it. This isn't going to be a lecture video where I lecture the shit out of you guys, but... These, these people that sit there, you know, and, and and they get pissed off because someone's got nice nice things. Like, I I see, I go hang out with my, my, I have a friend in Texas, one of my best friends is a major car YouTuber, Steve's POV. He's the one that took Daily Driven Exotics to Japan, okay? Did you see them go to Japan? With my buddy Steve, that is one of my best, closest friends in my whole life, is Steve. And uh, 
one of the most motivational people you'll ever meet in your life. You want motivation, you want to sit there and listen to someone on YouTube who really has his shit together and will give you great life advice, go watch some of his videos. Not all the car stuff, but he really has some great, great advice videos and things. I hang out with Steve, and I like, a week later, I'm like, I need to go home and rethink my fucking life, because what am I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. You know, it's, it's amazing what just hanging around one positive person can do to you, you know? And Steve is that person, like, we're, we're going on a 25 year solid friendship right now. And he, I've got a lot of friends. As you get older, your great, great friends, the amount shrinks. It's like, here they are. The ones you can trust the most, that you love the most, that are just there for you, that actually talk to you. And you know they care about you. That number is going to shrink the older you get. You can hold them in one hand. Uh, or count, you can count them on one hand. And Steve is probably one of my top two or three best friends of all time. I don't sit there going, man, when I, you know, years ago, when I didn't have what I have now, I wouldn't go, oh, he's got all this stuff, or like, like, must be nice. No, 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 no. I sat there and I would listen to him on the phone with clients and him watch him do business. And I'd take mental fucking notes, you know? I'm like, I gotta be more like that. But yeah. Anytime I, hang out with a friend of mine who's successful, I think like, what the hell am I not doing right? Look at jealous people, man. Work off that. Work off that thing in your mind going, hmm. Don't be jealous. Sit there and go, what, what can I do? What can I do better? friends that are freaking billionaires i know i'll never be a billionaire <laughs> but i don't hate them for having crazy money mm, oh so good mm, right from croatia ah! so like a to my one friend who's mega rich mr steve you see me do videos on his crazy house and his six or seven Rolls Royces and his crazy car collection and his, his he's got a one house in Miami that's 50 million, another one that's, I, it's, it's in, I do a video and the same peanut gallery out there, oh, look at who makes videos on their rich friend stuff. Like, whatever they can do to come up with something about me, no matter what it is, they're going to try and dig up something to talk shit about me. <laughs> and I go, do you know why I did the video saying, oh my God, look at all this cool shit? Because my friend goes, hey, why don't you come do a video on my crazy house in Florida and the cars? Because he wants to support my channel. He goes, I love reason. He goes, I love watching your videos. Why don't you come do one on my crazy house? I go, all right, hell yeah, I'll do it. Because that's what friends do. They say, hey, what can I do to help you? How can I support what you're doing? I go, I'm not going to become some crazy successful YouTuber, okay? I said, but my buddy goes, I don't care. F come fill all the cars, film the estate. You know, we'll have fun doing it. And it's like, I, I didn't do it to show off. Like, well, I'm, I don't show off with other people's money. Like, look what. I got friends like that who always try to one-up other people with money that's not theirs. <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, yeah, well, my friend, you know, you know, well, he, but I know a guy that's got uh, $20 million. Well, my friend's got $40 million. Like, who gives a crap? It's not yours. <laughs> like, what? You know, Jesus Christ. It's very bizarre. So, getting back to me, I have been in the diamond business for a long time. Classic cars was always an outlet to make money on. I've got other friends, though, that were major, major players 
in a certain industry. And for 20 years, 20 years, like on the nose, I became a jeweler to the adult film industry. Talk about a weird turn in life. I fell into that head first and uh, my God. Every year I was at the AVNs, the AEE, Adult Entertainment Expo. Walking the red carpet with the Vivid Girls and the private parties. It was insane. I got stories. But <clears throat> that was another thing. Like, I saw this. I saw an opportunity. And I went for it. Okay? You got to... You got to, they say life is what you make of it, you know, it's no bullshit. Um, yeah, I was there for the height of the entire industry. The peak, 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 we were there, man. It was, it was crazy. Um, very good friends of mine to this day were um, major players in Vivid Video Combat Zone, Red Light District, so many other, so many other companies. <laughs> like, I'm going to create something out of this to cater to this industry because there was a lot of money in that industry. A lot. And I was there the peak, peak, peak of that industry. And I watched it all come crashing down, you know. 20 years, right in the middle of the whole industry. And, uh, but my God. We got the pictures to prove it. That's for damn sure. But, um, you know, then through that business, okay, like I know that I sat in so many meetings, okay. At first, you would think, like, oh, right away, most people would think, oh, that business. It's where it would, you would think it would be like some back room of some you know, CD motel. No, this was all, these guys were big business. I mean, they had, you walk in these companies and you're like, holy shit, this is not what I thought it would be. You know, at, at first when you're, at first when I was getting into it and, and starting to meet more people and go visit these big companies and I started networking with these guys you're you was like a a eye opener at how big some of these companies were and how serious they were about business you know it was, man the meetings i sat in in chatsworth california you're like there's a lot of money to be made here i made custom jewelry for not only actors and actresses but also the companies you know the little necklaces that would be made for some of the girls to wear and whatnot but anyway very interesting time in my life. Um, then I met more people through that business, and this was back. This is this is more branching out, doing different things to make money. Okay, this was when trying to keep this somewhat clean. Enlargement pills were hitting the market, you know, more and more and more, and I knew the guys that invented one of them. You know, it was they they owned one of the major label enlargement pills. And they're like, you want to sell this? You want to become a dealer? And at first, you know, all my friends were la they're like laughing, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, this is crazy. I can't believe you're selling these things. And uh, I'm like, well, can you believe that my cost is nine dollars a bottle and i'm getting 59 dollars a bottle can you believe that because i am and i did that for three years like the the profit margin was insane and um you know eventually three years into it more people were able to get their hands on it i was selling it through ebay i was selling through ebay mostly i have i put ads out there too i was printing and i got where the this is so long ago. This is all in the 90s. And uh, back when my eBay name was Rolex Kid, 
I started off selling rare Star Wars toys and pre-owned Rolex watches through the store I, worked, I was working for. And um, I branched off. I was, I was selling DVDs and um, and this bottle of magic pills. <laughs> and uh, the pro like I said, the profit was crazy. So, but three years in, more people were able to get their hands on it. And now guys are undercutting the shit out of each other on eBay. And I mean, I was making major money doing this. And uh, it was to the point where I'd say you guys are, are uh, trying to undercut each other so bad. I emailed three people on, on eBay all together, all at once on the same day. I, I just contacted all of you people. I was getting, let's say it was starting out like f about 50 bucks profit per bottle. And you'd sell two packs, three packs. I mean, it was freaking nuts, the money coming in. I go, I went from making that to, you know, 40 bucks profit bottle, 30 bucks profit. Now I'm making $12 profit. Now it's about eight bucks profit because you nitwits can't stand that one guy's dropping his price a dollar more than the other guy. I said, if you all stop right now and everyone raises their prices to an agreed, agreed point, money will be made across the board and it will be good money. And of course, everyone's so freaking greedy, none of them wanted to hear it. Nope, no, no, screw you. And in the end, I'm like, this is a waste of my time. Waste of my time. But what an amazing three years it was up to that point. So... Yeah, when I hear people say I'm a trust fund baby and all this weird bullshit, I'm like, you don't know nothing about my life. It, it's so weird, you know? Like, go in the mirror and point at that guy and go, look at that guy. What is he doing with his life? You shouldn't be worried about this guy, okay? Just because I have masks? Like, that's going to drive you nuts? My God. I'm sorry about this rant, but... Once in a while, these idiots need to be called out for what they are. They're, they're fools, you know? <laughs> anyway, this beauty right here, my good old Merlin. I said I would never sell this mask, right? But guess what? He's being shipped off to sunny Los Angeles to a very good friend of mine who is a very quiet, quiet collector out there. And it's funny, I got I know big mask collectors out there who are so quiet, they don't want to put most most of their things online, they don't want to interact too much online with you know too many of the groups, they kind of sit back in the shadows and watch, and, and I totally get it now. Because look what can happen. <laughs> People, <laughs> you know, no real harm comes to you, but it's like you get these morons, like, let's get the trust one, baby. Oh, that guy. <laughs> So, uh, yes, he always told me, he goes, if you ever sell that Merlin, please think of me. And I said, I'll think of you, but I, there's nothing that would make me sell this Merlin. However, there's one thing in this box that changed all of that. And I just got it in the mail, and I couldn't wait to open it. I said, I got to open it on camera because I need some damn mask content. For my followers that are here for the masks, right? Uh, I'm going to show you exactly why he's going to California. There's going to be guys out there seeing this, and they're all going to start crying like, ah, I would have bought that from you. Ah. No, you wouldn't. Because you know why? Because the guy that's getting this told me more than 10 years ago. He wanted this mask. So no, you're not, you, you wouldn't have got it. It ain't like I said, oh, I'm just going to sell this to a random person. No, this is going to a very important friend of mine, okay, who politely asked one time and told me this is the only mask he needs to complete his freaking collection, apparently. And I said, it's going to go to him. If I ever do anything with it, it's going to go to him. So... All you guys out there in the groups, don't even don't even waste your little fingers texting me. 
<laughs> and here's the reason I sold it. Because I had to fork over some serious money for another one. Oh. I'll tell you the guy that sold this and you could all go after him with your pitchforks. Why did you sell it to Rudy? <laughs> oh my God. So this copy, when my friend got this, I go, man, you found like a new old stock Merlin. Still tagged. Holy shit. He wasn't kidding either. But, man, you got to pull the hair out. You got to get the beard out. Okay. This great old wizard. I'll tell you again the reasons why I love this mask so much. Okay. Man, he's really blue compared to his cousin here. Um, but I love, I love the aging on this one. It just looks so cool. Um, I wonder if this thing would clean up. I'm not even gonna lick it. I'm not gonna lick it because I know my friend's gonna watch this. I bet a lot of this is just dust on top. I will try to clean a little spot before I box him up. He could be just dusty from, you know, the years he sat in someone else's collection. But I love this mask because it really reminds me of a time in my childhood that I really loved. And that was like 1981, 82, 83, uh, during Dungeons and Dragons, you know? I'd go into bookstores, I'd go to bookstores and I'd see all these Dungeons and Dragons boxes and books and you could buy those game packs and the, and it was all the, the role-playing games it was just such a neat time you know and this mask it just brings me back to the old days of D, &D you know it's so cool it's such a it's such a weird color they chose to paint him in you know there's a Ooh, I used to have the other wizard, the other wizard that had the pale, um, you know, he had actual skin tone, like, they used the same sculpt and made a white-haired version with, you know, re regular skin tone. I used to have him, I sold him, that wizard, but, yeah, I don't have him anymore. Um... But I always thought the blue one was so strange, you know, and it, it became one of my favorite masks to ever be produced through Don Post Studios. So, man, very, very cool. This is, a, I mean, despite the, the coloration, you know, despite the color of him, this is still an amazing mask. And he would have brought some very, very good money if I eBayed him, but he had to go to my friend. And it's funny because my one friend actually foam filled both of these. I can tell he was the foam filler of both of these masks. He does such a good job. So yeah, that's the only reason he's leaving the collection. Because he's been replaced by the same old mask. You can see he's got like the dark bluish gray circles under his eyes. Like the bags under his eyes. So this was a new old stock copy that popped up, you know, in recent years. I've had this one for a long time, though. Yeah, man, is that cool. Great detail. Um, I bet he will clean up really good. My friend, I'm going to clean him before I send him to you because I think he will come out looking great. I don't think you will disagree. I'll be very careful. All right, what else are we going to talk about <clears throat> here on the Crimson Ghost Network? Hmm. Oh, there's some more mask talk we could talk about. Annoying shit that happened recently in this hobby. Um, one more little thing in this hobby that just makes you go, ugh and makes you go do other things is when things like this happen. I was recently offered a mask for sale through uh, private messaging from a guy who I bought, you know, a good handful of masks from who's always given me pretty damn good pricing. And he's 
definitely a veteran collector, mask maker. I'm not going to say his name. I'm sure a lot of people will figure it out, but. So, literally reaches out and says, Hey, do you want to buy this rare Steve Johnson Cyclops for $250 shipped? I go, holy shit. Yes. I've been wanting the mask. It's pretty rare. I've never seen one. So I didn't know exactly what it should look like. But coming from who it was coming from, I said, man, he's always giving me really great deals. Okay? Really great prices. I'm assuming it's legit. Otherwise, he would say, hey, do you want to buy a... I got a mold. I'm going to make some copies. You interested in one of these? No, no, no. Do you want to buy this rare Steve Johnson Cyclops? I'll go, yeah. Pay for it, boom. Like four days goes by. A buddy of mine goes, hey. Uh, I'm being offered a rare Steve Johnson Cyclops. And uh, I'm going to pass on it, but maybe you're interested. You have nice Steve Johnson pieces. I go, what? <laughs> I go, well, that's weird because I just paid for that mask four days ago. And we both know the guy that messaged us. It ain't like some scammer popped up out of nowhere. And I'm like, what's good? He's like, what's going on? I go, I don't know. And I showed him. I go, look, dude. I go, but why is he giving it to you for 200 less than me? <laughs> but why is he giving you for 200 shipped and then he got me for 250 shipped? I go, man, something's fishy. I go, why are you getting it for 50 bucks less than me? <laughs> so I reach out to a couple more buddies, and we're like, everyone's like, man, we all know him. We don't see him outright trying to take your money and send you a brick in the mail or something, you know. Like, something's up, but not flat out getting money from people and taking it off to Mexico or something, you know. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And they're like, the mask looks good on the pictures. And the pictures were far away. It was small. You know, it wasn't like when I sell a mask, like, hey, here it is in high definition, everybody. Every angle you could possibly want. No, 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 no. So, uh, then I checked the tracking, and the tracking, it was like nothing happening. I was like, uh-oh, for three or four days. And he goes, check it now. It's working now. And I go, okay. I didn't say nothing at this point. I'm like, okay, let's just see what happens, because this is weird. And uh, mask shows up, and it was a recast. And here's the thing. It was nice. Okay, worth 200, worth 250. It, it wasn't the mask itself. It was the bullshit way it was sold to me. Okay, and it was offered to a lot of other people like this. Do you want to buy this rare mask? To me, that's like a quick cash grab. You know, I've said this in my group. This is a cash grab. I'm going to show five or ten people the same message and they think I have a rare Steve Johnson mask and I'm going to send them a recast in the mail and I've got a pile of them sitting here. You know, anybody, uh, anybody in this hobby, and I mean anybody out there, especially if they've been in the hobby as long as this guy, would say either, hey, I got a mold or hey, you're making coffees. Do you want one? Not, hey, do you want to buy this rare mask? It ain't a bait and switch because the picture was the, the thing you got in the mail, you know. But it was a total ruse, you know. It was a total lie. And it's like if you would have said, hey, I'm making copies. Do I want one for a couple of bucks? I'd be like, all right, fuck it. 
I already sold it. I sold it within a few days of getting it because, yeah, it was nice. But every time I'd see it on my shelf, I'd be like, there's that mask that I was, you know, lied to about by a guy who I've not only bought masks from in the past, but I've also donated to his GoFundMe when he needed help. You know? It's fucking it's fucked up. You know, now I just know never to do business with him ever again. And then I, you know, I put it in my group and all these other guys start chiming in like, oh, not his first rodeo. No, 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 no. There's other masks out there. Same type of thing going on. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to dig into other shit. Be truthful. And people won't be pissed off. You know, it wasn't $1,000. It wasn't $500. It was 250 bucks. And it was a nice mask, but it wasn't a rare Steve Johnson mask. And 99.99999% of people in this hobby will agree with me, and they have. I've got the DMs to prove it where they're all saying, that's fucked up. All right. Oh, there's one left. Mmm. Banana. So... One more. We got to close this out with one more mask because I babbled too much in the beginning. But I had a lot of goofy shit to get off my chest, you know? It's the, it's the weirdos in this hobby that make me put this hobby aside sometimes. One time I didn't come down here for an entire summer. Isn't that weird? Closed the door, shut the light off, and just didn't come down here for a whole summer. Um, I am going back to the Franken Shrine. Gotta get that nailed down this week when I'm leaving. Frank's brother and I have things to do. We have breakfasts and dinners to attend to. Man, we have a good time when I'm out there. Um, yeah, so be prepared. More artifacts of the Frankenshrine videos will be coming soon. And um, I gotta start working on the big video, the big Frankenshrine video at some point. I'm gonna start putting it together because it's gonna take me quite a while to do that. But um, anyway, I'm really pleased where this collection is right now because it's such a great mixture of things. I remember when not long ago I was strictly like mostly down post studios you know and uh i love coming down here now though and seeing different stuff you know especially this wall and of course you know frank's when frank was alive we would talk about his collection and the masks and how he wants his collection to live on and and i knew there would be a point where this room was going to change you know, and I would say, all right, well, I, uh, I needed, I need to get rid of Don Post stuff because Frank had a mixture of everything and he had the best taste in monsters and his collection was so diverse. It was crazy. Just, it, it was really something else. So having a whole wall pretty much dedicated to him right now is insane. I look there, every mask I look at that was his, I, in my mind, I go, I knew exactly where they were sitting in his collection all these years, and it's just crazy to me. It's a sad story, but in the, in the end now, it's, it's pretty cool being able to save a lot of them because they were, some of them, they were starting to have problems and needing foam filling, needing, you know, needing repairs on some of them, but a lot of them were beautiful and not needing a damn thing. So I am beyond honored to be the one that is carrying on his legacy in some way, in some way, because man, I cannot wait. I can't wait to show you the video of the collection all in detail and tell you more of his story because it's going to be a cool one. Um, his brother and I have been working on things regarding that so in time you will see all right 
what else are we going to talk? Okay, so I'm getting ready to have some masks professionally foam filled. And I am going to show you right now which ones they are. I'm going to pick five masks that are being shipped across this country to be foam filled. And we're going to take a good before and after look. Okay, so I'm going to show you what they look like now. And then when they come back, how the process helped them and helped shape them better and fill them and bring them to a state where they can now be preserved. Okay, so hang tight. One more thing before we do that, before we do that, I know what I want to talk about. So you remember the, this guy's got to go on the shelf over here. You remember the trio of bloody guys back there by, <clears throat> by Distortions Unlimited. Good old Jordan Huchel took them home as a teenager and fixed them up for Frank by adding more blood to them. Well, those of you that watch this channel know I'm trying to complete another set. And I ended up scoring another one which I talked about recently, but I still need that third mask. Um, I love those so much. I had to try. I love them so much. To me, they're some of the greatest things that ever come out of Distortions Unlimited because they're so freaking gory. I mean, get this camera here. Nobody was doing gore like distortions. I mean, look at that. It's crazy. Eyeballs and big faces being gashed open. Like, can you imagine a 12 year old going, mom, I want to be that for Halloween. And then she's like, what? Your brain sticking out? Like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> because that was the eighties. You know, the eighties were a different time. And, uh, it's like, This takes me right back to that wonderful time of being a teenager or a young kid reading Fangoria, looking at all the gory shit in there at a young age and loving all of it. And uh, man, distortions, Ed Edmonds, the, the stuff Ed was doing <laughs> for Halloween, for simple Halloween masks back then, they're not that simple. But I mean, the, the things he was putting out for the public it's crazy so yes i need one more piece to this puzzle and the thing is i keep calling them a trio those of you that know these masks know that they were not sold as a trio okay they were in different spots on the catalog sheets back then i'm calling them a trio because jordu took those three masks home and I now have a custom trio out of them. And it's like, I'm trying greatly to um, put together a factory painted version of that, what I call now a trio, you know? All right, guys. We got a good lineup here that are good candidates for foam filling by the professional and like i've said many times unfortunately my friend does not take on other customers anymore he's so filled up with orders and filling for people that he doesn't take on anymore i recently was told that somebody out there was using my name to get through to him saying oh rudy told me you would help me don't do that <laughs> don't do not use my name and lie to a friend of mine because it's going to get right back to me. Because my friend comes straight to me and goes, did you tell this guy to, you know, talk to me? And I'm like, I don't know who that guy is. And um, secondly, I'm like, I don't even know how he got your email because I don't give my friend's email out. So do not think you're going to pull some shit like, oh, Rudy told me you'd help me. And then Rudy's going to go, I don't know that dude, and guess what? You're gonna get shut down. So anyway, yes, the two distortions pieces, but I've got a great House of Horrors mask back here. Jesus! All right, we've got some very rare David Smith masks here. 
I've got two of them that have been patiently waiting for foam filling. I, I can't I can't stand when a mask is teetering around like that, stuffed and just you know almost falling over. I, I want to fill these properly and not risk them falling off and I can't stand when they're like this so yeah they need to be stuffed better but these two especially are very rare and um, are very deserving of professional foam filling but also like I was saying this House of Horrors piece back here is a great mask so at least these five are going out and I may pick a few more I wanted you to take a good look at what these masks look like. Sometimes they can't be filled and they're sent back. So there is a chance a couple of these might come back. But I want you to see before and after because these suckers need help. They need to be filled if these are going to live on because another few years in the state they're in, they can start getting problems and start falling apart, start cracking, sagging from gravity, you know. These two are okay, they're nice and soft, great condition, but but these these guys on the outside are, are getting to be delicate. Definitely fillable in my opinion, but we'll have to see what my friend says. Um, anyway, thank you for watching and thank you for sitting through the first half where I'm babbling about nonsense and all the bullshit out there that just a few morons in this hobby, you know, have to stir up and spew through simple jealousy or just mental illness, you know. Um, all of the top stones have sold with the exception of the old 70s pirate. This is an actual 70s pirate. Keith Ward stamp under the chin. Um, 160 shipped on him. And this is a this is a great mask. I'm crazy for even selling this. Had one guy interested, then he ghosted me. Um, so it's for sale. Do my, do me a favor, comment under the YouTube video right away if you're gonna go after it, um, because that way you will be the one locked in next for it. Because there's Instagram, Facebook, like you know, other people are gonna see that and go, okay, it's sold. Um, and they're not going to know if it's sold on other platforms if they don't follow those. So, And then the old male vampire. It's got discoloration like on the ear. Um, we'll say 125 shift on him. Still cool. You could easily touch up those dark areas with an airbrush. Or just leave them because he's got way more character that way. Those areas, they feel dry. But they're not you know, falling apart or damaged in any way. Just a foam filling on something like this could easily cost $100. So this is 125 shipped. You know, that's a crazy deal. So anyway, thank you. Uh-oh, more text messages coming through. Thank you once again. And uh, I promise less babbling on the next mask video and more masks.